Welcome to chapter, eight sec chapter 2, section 8, Function Operations and Composition. First, let's look at operations of functions. Let's say we've got a function f of x is 3x plus 2, g of x is 5x minus 7. If I wanted to add 3x plus 2 to 5x minus 7, we could have written f of x plus g of x, but math people are lazy. So they're wanting us to recognize f plus g of x to be the notation for that. I think we can all make that leap. And if we went ahead and added those, we would see that this is 8x minus 5. If we wanted to subtract 3x plus 2 minus 5x minus 7. Now I'm going to have to distribute the minus, but instead of writing f of x minus g of x, we're going to get really snazzy here and say f minus g of x. And if you work that out, you should get negative 2x plus 9. If we wanted to multiply, we would get f of x times g of x, boil that out. We're just going to write that as f g of x. And foiled, we get 15x squared minus 11x minus 14. If we do 3x plus 2 divided by 5x minus 7, that's f of x divided by g of x. That's f slash g of x. And there isn't too much we can do with that. That's still 3x plus 2 over 5x minus 7. Now, if I wanted to know what f plus g of negative 3 is, I would just take this 8x minus 5, and I would do 8 times negative 3 minus 5. That gets me negative 24 minus 5, or negative 29. f minus g of negative 3. Well, now we're going to use this function, negative 2 times x. Oh, but x is negative 3 now plus 9. That gets me 6 plus 9, or 15. fg of negative 3. Well, now we're going to use that guy. So I have 15 times negative 3 squared minus 11 times negative 3 minus 14. Well, negative 3 squared is positive 9. So that's 135 when I multiply 9 and 15, plus 33 minus 14. I believe that's going to be 164. Let's see. Nope. 168 minus 14, 154. Boy, I wish you were here with me to check my arithmetic. And if we wanted to do f slash g of negative 3, that's going to be 3 times negative 3 plus 2 over 5 times negative 3 minus 7. That's negative 9 plus 2 over negative 15 minus 7. Negative 7 over negative 22. Not much I can do with that, but I could cancel out those minus signs. We should look at what the domain of these functions are. And when I look at domain, I want to know, is there anything x can't be? There's nothing x can't be. 
this function f of x plus g of x, f plus g of x, that is just the line y equals 8x minus 5. So my domain, negative infinity to positive infinity. My range, negative infinity to positive infinity. Nothing x or y can't be. Same goes for f minus g, f times g of x. They have the same domain and the same range. However, we get into a little trouble with f divided by g of x. Now this is 3x plus 2 over 5x minus 7. And I'm going to ask you to put that in your calculator. If we put y equals, now, 3x plus 2 in parentheses divide 5x minus 7. If you're in your standard window, you're going to get a graph going something like this. And what is this point that the vertical line is the value x can never be? Well, that's when our denominator is 0. If 5x minus 7 is 0, x is 7 fifths. So x can never be 7 fifths because our denominator can never be 0. So here my domain goes negative infinity to 7 fifths union 7 fifths to infinity. What about the range? What on earth is that value? Well, I'm getting closer and closer to it as x tends to negative infinity or positive infinity. So let's just put some really huge values in for x. Let's try x equals 1,000. Then I have 3,000 plus 2 over 5,000 minus 7. As the x gets huger and huger, we're really getting closer and closer to about 0.6. So y is never going to be 0.6. We're going from negative infinity to positive 0.6, union 0.6 to infinity. And if you look at your graph and figure out you need to know what you're getting to as x tends to infinity or as y tends to infinity, you can put those values in and solve for your domain and range options. End of part one.